After the Guide Environment Team Europe reached Halifax Harbour under Jury Rig and was embraced by his shore team, skipper Benjamin Dutru told how the emotions overwhelmed him at that moment. The arrival was earlier than expected. The boat is going to return to Europe by cargo ship. It will be next Sunday, the 18th, when it's loaded onto the cargo ship. It then departs on the 21st. Live on board and uh, we need a gasol. Uh, we have no gasol, uh, so we can't use the engine. Uh, so we have only uh, 20 litres now and we can't use the engine to join uh, Halifax. So we need 200 litres of gasol or, or uh, as, uh, as possible for you. But yes, I confirm we use uh, diesel. We use diesel. So, if I drop to water, uh, can you pick them? Can you collect them? Because there are many civils. Uh, I cannot make maneuvers to you. So, if I uh, drop some diesel uh, in bottles, so can you collect them? Uh, yes, yes, for sure we can collect them. Uh, we have uh, we have uh, already uh, 15 liters uh, of uh, diesel on board, so we can use the engine for one hour. Voilà, j'espère qu'on arrivera à atteindre des vitesses assez correctes avec ce gréement sans utiliser le moteur euh, pour essayer de rejoindre Halifax au plus vite. Uh, we have called all the all the boats we cross, so fishing boats, cargo boats, and uh, and finally we have found one uh, red captain, uh, Ibrahim, uh, who help us. Um, so you have stopped the you have stopped the boat uh, for us and prepare uh, 100 liters of uh, of fuel. Uh, all the tank attached uh, and during the night they have put a flashlight on and we were just just behind the boat uh, we 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 take it out uh, from the water in the boat um, yeah it was an hard time but very good time the team was very happy because now we have fuel and we can use the engine in the middle of the ridge no wind and um, and we can uh, go in the good direction uh, to Halifax. After the ridge, we, we will have uh, some more wind tomorrow, so we can use the jury rig uh, to go in the, in the good direction without the engine. This is the weekly sailing highlights show, the world on water for week ending, May 19, 2023. The other dismastered Amoka in the ocean race, Wholesome PRB, arrives in Newport on May 18, as we edit this report, and it will be introduced to a new piece of kit. It's brand new mast. That means there's only a few days to step it, and do tests of the new rig before the race starts again on Sunday, for leg 5, the Atlantic crossing. It's a double points leg and they are still leading the race on points. We wish them luck.
So this morning we put the mast uh, out of the truck and uh, it's very important for the team. We have uh, now one week to prepare the mast and to put all in the mast to have a perfect mast for Kevin and the team. Donc là on a pas mal d'étapes à faire sur le mât, c'est-à-dire qu'on doit déjà... Le mât est monotype, par contre la tête de mât ici n'est pas monotype. C'est-à-dire qu'on peut venir faire une tête de mât avec nos aériens, c'est nos capteurs d'angle de vent. Et on a aussi le support radar qui n'est pas monotype, donc là les gars vont pouvoir strater le nouveau support radar sur le bateau neuf. Ensuite on va... il y a tout le travail de matelotage des gréeurs. Donc on a Enzo qui est déjà sur place et qui va être rejoint par Olivier pour mettre en place toutes les drisses et toutes les loupes, tout ce qui tient vraiment le mât au bateau. Twenty twenty three is the eleventh season of the fifty two Super Series, which was founded in Barcelona, May twenty twelve, when five boats raced. The twenty twenty three season started with eleven teams racing, including one new boat from Hong Kong who has Ian Walker from Great Britain as its tactician. The 2023 season opens in beautiful Saint-Tropez, the shining jewel of the Riviera as the 52 Super Series races in France for the very first time in its 11-year history. Eleven teams representing eight different nations line up at the iconic dock in the heart of the beautiful town. Among them, first-time Super Series racers Alpha Plus, a new team from Hong Kong led by passionate owners who are pursuing their long-held ambition to race at this highest level. Well, I think if we do anything but be last, I think everyone would say that's been a pretty good season. But, I mean, deep down, you always want to do better than that. You know, I'd love to win a race. My dream is to be here. The 2022 champions have transitioned to quantum racing powered by American Magic, seeking to offer young American talent, experience of top-level Grand Prix racing, and a pathway into the America's Cup. A little bit of nerves for my first day, but feeling really good, and I'm super excited to get out there and start racing. It's something very new for me as well. Certainly a challenge, but I'm very excited for it, and I'm going to do my best and make sure I'm doing a good job for the team. Paprec carry the French hopes on the Gulf of Saint-Tropez. It's fantastic, it's a very good condition, the place is fantastic, so what can we complain about? Hey! Guillermo Parada, the driving force behind four 52 Super Series titles for Azura, has joined Tony Langley's British Gladiator crew and it is a potent mix. It's like a new challenge and a new start to play with, a, with another team, so I'm enjoying it big time. It's great to see the passion, you know. He, he really is passionate. The Gulf of Saint-Tropez is well known to many top pro sailors, but perhaps less so in May. Nonetheless, the race area proves quite one-sided, which places a big premium on starting cleanly, and indeed some of the favourites come unstuck early on in the regatta. The constant feature is beautiful spring sunshine all the way through the event and winds varying from 6 to 20 knots offer great racing. Ergen Imri's Turkish flag team hold their nerve all the way through to an exacting finale to win the third regatta of their careers, consistency being their keystone. It's great. We were not expecting to perform that well in this first event. There's a lot of new things in the team. So we were approaching this like just to learn where we were. We've been a little bit surprised, but in these live wind conditions, we were, we were performing very, very well. We are really happy on Provesa, how things are going, and we are looking forward for the season. And Quantum Racing, powered by American Magic, proved their new young recruits are fast learners taking second place, and they head to Scarlino, tied on points with Tony Langley's Gladiator, who round out the Saint-Tropez podium. I think it's a big boost to our confidence and to our motivation. Looking forward to Scarlino and be ready to, to, to have a good regatta there. Congrats to Provenza and especially my friend uh, Nacho. I think we got better throughout the week, which is uh, what we're after. And it's going to be a really long season and we just want to keep getting better. And so au revoir from Saint-Tropez. We'll see you in Scarlino.
The Santa Maria Cup was held in Annapolis, hosted by the Eastport Yacht Club, which is on the Women's Match Race Tour, as their second event. We have all of the action from the race course, interviews from the crews, the round robins, the semis and finals, all wrapped up with the winner's speech. The Visit Annapolis and Anne Arundel County Santa Maria Cup, with support from the Maryland Sports Commission, made its return to the Eastport Yacht Club. Having originally started in 1991 and running for 20 years, the event took a hiatus and was resurrected to be the second stop on the 2023 Women's World Match Racing Tour. For each event on the tour, the skippers were chosen by world ranking, and for the Santa Maria Cup, 10 teams from six countries arrived in Annapolis, Maryland for four days of racing. Two round robins ensued over the first three days in everything from sun to rain to light air to knock down puffs, sometimes in the same flight. Match racing is so fun. It's this incredible layer cake with this awesome tactical game as the frosting. It's just refined sailing. Everyone knows the plays and the counter plays and it's all about execution. Your teamwork is right there in your face. We love the close intensity of it, you know, the multiple lead changes in a race and um, all the little plays around the course. I think it's just a bit more exciting than, than fleet racing, for us at least. Match racing is super competitive. I don't think there's any other sailing that's as fast paced um, and as tight as match racing is and that's what I really like about it. Every time that things look like really dicey, you just have to take a quick look over at the other boat and see that they're struggling too, and you just have to struggle better. So it's a really fun game, lots of adrenaline. I, I just love it. At the end of the two round robins, the top four teams were determined. Team Wings, Anna Osling from Sweden, Nicole Brault of Team Vela from the USA, Celia Willison of Edge Racing from New Zealand, and 2.0, Megan Thompson, also from New Zealand. For the semifinals, Osling, as the one seed, chose the number four seed, Megan Thompson, as her matchup, which was risky, considering Thompson was one of the only two teams to beat her in the round robins. Thompson went up 2-0, creating a must-win situation for Osling, and when she did to tie up the score, their semi went to a sudden death. Osling won her third match in a row for the day to progress to the finals. In the other semi, Celia Willison from New Zealand was able to upset Nicole Brault and move into the finals. Teams that had been knocked out watched from spectator boats and got even more time enjoying everything Annapolis and Anne Arundel County have to offer. Because of the Santa Maria Regatta, my team and I have come to Annapolis and we've absolutely loved it. We spent the day exploring, walking down the town square and going to museums and we'll definitely be back for more. And we love Annapolis so much, we always love coming here and our favourite things that we've done this week, my number one is getting the crop pretzel from Davis's, I've already had two. Um, we talked a lot to our host family who recommended the, yeah, the ice cream store actually. And yeah, the brewery, craft beer. Um, it's such a charming town and I mean people here are so warm and welcome and just have the best experience being here. And Absolutely loved the crab. Really cool to have such a place right next to the sea that's really known for its seafood which we love. So really enjoyed that and the crab cakes are awesome. In the Pettit Finals, Nicole Brault and Megan Thompson split the first races, sending them into a winner-take-all third match. It took many twists and turns until Brault and her Vela Racing team from St. Francis Yacht Club took the final win for third place overall. In the finals, which was a first to three-point battle, the first and second match out of the gate, Osling and team put serious distance between her and Willison. In the third pre-start, entering from starboard, Ostling managed to catch Willison in a port starboard penalty going into the first dial-up. Wilson traded out leading the race with shifty and puffy conditions, even gaining major ground on the final run, but couldn't quite get the hook on Ostling to try and start a scuffle to offset that penalty she carried the entire race. Anna Ostling with crew Linnea Winnergan, Annika Kerlunger, and Anna Holmdahl White therefore took their third point to win the 2023 Santa Maria Cup. Okay. 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 Okay.
show you three times the Saturday night. The tip to them. The guys who told me that her brakes is not their fault. <laughs> first time here, but as I said in the first speech of the opening ceremony, we've heard so much about this place. And we found out that everything was true. <laughs> it's a beautiful, beautiful little city, and you guys, you are amazing. I, I don't really understand how you can, you know, make us feel like family members in only five days, but I'm so happy for that. That's a great symbol for us to take home. It's in my heart and in my heart. For having this trophy for the first time, it's very huge for us. Thank you so much and see you in France. Congratulations to everyone and best wishes for the rest of the Women's World Match Racing Tour. For T2P TV, this is Ashley Love. We are viewer supported sailing media. Please subscribe, share, like and check to alerts bell. The IQ Foil Open European Championships came to an end with the prize giving ceremony, marking the culmination of an action packed week in Patras, Greece. This windsurfing extravaganza, organized in collaboration with local sailing club IO, patron and held at the scenic Porto Rio hotel venue, will be etched in the annals of the sports, the still short, history. I'm really happy, but it was hard today. I think I start really good, but uh, I win my side and she went to the other side and she won, so she is the winner. I'm happy that I was the leader of the most of the days and, and I will learn to the another event. And also congratulations to Mina and also Emma. Yeah, so the, the qualification round I was struggling a bit, uh, but could make it uh, without big counters into Goldfleet and then in Goldfleet something clicked and I had really uh, quite dominant performances over two days, uh, which put me in the lead and I came into the medal race with a 10 point lead and uh, yeah, got beaten in the final by Nicolo coming from 10, uh, which is very far away from points, but uh, that's how the class is and that's the, rule, uh, the rules we play too. And uh, I'm happy for him because he showed really extraordinary performance today in, the, in a strong win. Uh, his reaching in, in 30 knots was uh, something special, I have to say. He was faster than everybody and he, uh, he showed that he was faster than everybody, so he deserved the win. But uh, I will definitely see if I can find something magic on the reach in 30 knots as well. Uh, yeah, it was a long week. We had lots of races. Uh, super windy at the start. I struggled a bit in the middle. Uh, I was a bit ill, but it's okay. And then uh, at the end, we had some lighter winds, which for me, I like from RSX, I like to pump, so that was good. And then managed to get myself in third. And then today was just like full send. <laughs> I gave it everything and got to the final. And then, yeah, I crashed in the last reach, but I'm super happy and grateful to be here. It feels good. I'm a bit in shock, but it's nice. It's nice. I expected to be second in under 21, but not to become the European champion. No. Feel really good. Last year I was vice European championship. This year European championship. So I'm really happy about it. The next step is try to win the world championship for sure. Yeah. Before I have to qualify the. The, the nation and then uh, I'm gonna qualify myself and then I'm gonna think about if I'm gonna qualify my, myself. Okay, very well done, congratulations. Thank you. An encouraging day for Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli with the technicians doing a stellar job in ironing out the gremlins from the team's new AC40 and delivering a fully functional platform on Saturday for the sailors to begin commissioning. The weather though in Cagliari was up and down with a dense rain-laden weather system filtering off the Carpo Terra Mountains early in the session, shutting out the sunlight, and delivering gusts up to 20 knots before clearing and leaving very marginal foiling conditions of just 7 to 8 knots. Man on board, Luna Rossa, Gecko, 
today the boat seems to work fine and you guys managed probably to fix all the issues. Unfortunately, the forecast wasn't playing along. Yeah, the, we knew that the weather was going to be really, really hard today. We knew that there were a lot of uh, systems uh, coming through and uh, we had one of them uh, just after the main hoist. So we had to drop the sails again, uh, re-hoist the sails later. But we, we achieved the goal of the day, which was to check uh, that the boat was working fine. And uh, finally, we had no, apparently no issue today. Uh, so uh, we are very happy with that, uh, that we could finally uh, fix uh, all the problems. And uh, so it's, it's been a positive day in a way. Uh, and uh, yeah, the weather didn't collaborate, but we knew that uh, it was going to be a hard day on that respect. Keko, uh, on the planning side, uh, also considering the LQ12, uh, how do you plan the day, considering the wind conditions and the sea state? Yeah. Like, do you target um, specific things? Well, basically, at this stage, we are trying to use the AC40 as much as we can. Uh, it's a new boat for us, and uh, we need to put some hours on the AC40. Uh, and uh, obviously, we try to use uh, those uh, time frames to uh, improve the LAQ. And so that the next time uh, uh, we go out with the LAQ12, we have uh, uh, a lot of new things uh, to try. So uh, the AC40 is also a good exercise for us because it keeps the uh, team going in the water when we make some modifications to the LAQ12. So yeah, we're very happy apart from uh, that little window where the AC40 was not working very well and we had a few issues with the hydraulic system. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's a positive day today. We have to think positive and, uh, and definitely it's going to be a good week uh, next week. Of course, not much sailing until now on the AC40, but um, I wanted to ask you, yes. can you tell us if you feel any difference? Well, of course, the, for us, the main difference, uh, the boat, uh, the boat is, it, it, is, it is like uh, lighter than, than uh, and we knew that the displacement of the boat was going to be lighter than, than our LAQ. Uh, there, is a, there are many reasons for it. Uh, uh, we, we are not surprised with that. And obviously, in light wind, uh, that feeling is very evident because uh, uh, you, you, you take off and, and, uh, and do maneuvers in uh, a lighter wind of what we can do with the LAQ-12. But it's not a surprise for, uh, for our team, so that's, that's the main uh, noticeable thing. Then all the controls are uh, pretty easy, but it's a new boat, and so it takes us still time to understand uh, where the differences are. Okay, well, what's the plan for the upcoming days? Um, I think we're going to share a little bit next week between the AC40 and the LAQ12. So it's going to be an interesting week because we're basically now uh, two tools ready to go in the water, and it's a great feeling to have uh, to have that. So uh, the LAQ is uh, pretty much ready to go out in the water with uh, with a lot of good stuff, and uh, and AC4 is finally working. So we are uh, really looking forward to next week. Ecco per concludere un commento, un riassunto della giornata di oggi in italiano. Beh, siamo molto contenti perché finalmente la C40 funzionava, abbiamo avuto non poche difficoltà i primi giorni eh, con i sistemi della barca e oggi, primo giorno eh, che la barca funzionava, e il meteo sapevamo che non era un, una bellissima giornata, eh, abbiamo fatto soltanto una decina di minuti di navigazione, eh, però eh, di nuovo giornata positiva. Grazie Keiko. Grazie a voi. <ride> Garda Trentino redeemed itself on the last day of the Torball PWA World Cup windsurfing slalom, and, despite the always very cloudy weather alternating with some rain, the wind was the protagonist, allowing racing both in the morning with a northerly wind and in the afternoon with a southerly wind that had risen in the last heat up to 15 knots.